Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know. I'm Solange. Uh, this is still Four of Beauty. You are still most welcome. Right, you will have seen from the thumbnail and the title. And if you've read any of it in the description, don't worry, I don't read them until afterwards either. That today's look is being created with one of the palettes that I showed you in my mega haul earlier this year. And one of the palettes oh, from a brand that I wanted to try this year. And I'm trying to, I think I'm going to have to take it out of its box because it's just too shiny. And I'm hoping that the palette itself might be a little less reflective. Uh, uh, debatable. But this is... Oh, there we go. Oh, the Silent Night palette. From Glamonatrix. I have been wanting to get into this for so long. Now, um, my channel is a teaching channel. By virtue of that, I go quite slowly. I go at a pace that beginners can keep up with. If that's too slow for you, with a Z Speed widget, please feel free to use it. I may sound a little bit like Alvin and the Chipmunks, but that would just increase the hilarity value, surely. I also, when I'm doing the eye look, I come in very, very close so that just my eyes are on screen. Um, I do this for a couple of reasons. One, so that if you're watching me on your phone, which is how I watch most tutorials when I'm getting ready, you can still see what's going on, even if you haven't got your glasses on or your contacts in. Uh, two, I do it so that you're not distracted by anything else going on around me. You can concentrate just on the blending, how I'm using the brush, the techniques that I'm using, how well the colours blend together, etc. And also, if I have to do any moments where I have to stop and wiggle because of pain, it's much easier for me to cut a segment out where it's not so obvious to you that I've had to cut a segment out where I've wiggled if it's just my eyes on screen. Um, if I have had to cut anything out, don't panic. I wouldn't have done any blending or any touchings up of anything off camera. So you will see from start to finish how to create this eye look. That being said, it is now time, Sammy the Sloth is currently having an afternoon siesta, to grab a drink. Not sponsored, but I wish they would because I love this. Grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy. So here it comes. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crime Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. 
Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, right, I'm trying a different order today, partly because I don't know whether I'm heading towards the, say it quietly, menopause. Um, but I have broken out in spots on my chin, the like of which I haven't seen since I was a teenager. Now it could be due to stress, but spots on the chin are usually hormonal. So, who knows? I'm shrugging like you can see when you're zoomed into my eyes. Mm. Um, you may see some jump cuts where I have to cut out where I've winced with pain but I won't do any of the eye makeup without you being able to see it. I'm sure I will have shown you this in the intro. Silent Night palette from Glow and Atrix. This is what she looks like on the inside. She's super super pretty and I cannot wait to have a play with her. So, I'm going to start off with... I'm just going to clean the brush. Now, I don't use colour switches because they're way too harsh on your brushes, especially if you're using a natural hair brush, which this one is. Don't ask me why, it's just the first one that I grabbed out of the pot this morning. 
but it's the kind of shape that I want because I want to get a really nice soft blown out look so it's, it's sort of like a tapered like a pencil brush except pencil brushes are that size okay that just to give you a rough idea of the sort of brush size I'm talking about okay I think I'm going to start off <clears throat> by going into like well, there's four mats there's an orange, a red, a blue and a green Mm -hmm. I think I'll start off with the orange. It's the lightest of all of the mattes and then I'll decide which colour I'm going to go in with after that. So, coated the brush. Now as always, rather than the windscreen wiper, I do the um, Foxtrot, which is natural turns to horse nose, a flicker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. Now the reason I do this, I'm 48 years old. I've lost over 200 pounds in weight. The skin on my eyelids moves. This eyelid, especially so, if you can see this super deep creasing here, that's where that eye was pulled around when I was four or five years old at the ophthalmic trying to work out why I wasn't seeing out of it. Still don't see out of it. So when this eye is closed, it's the blind leading the blind quite literally. Um, but by doing the Foxtrot rather than the windscreen wiper, I do sometimes do a windscreen wiper, but I will normally start off with Foxtrot. It gently moves the skin in one direction then the other without tugging on it. So you don't get those telltale white stripes. This is not an issue that only affects the more mature of us, like fan wines. Uh, it can affect uh, little Rieslings too. Um, basically, uh, I know teenagers that have got looser eyelids because just genetically, they've, they've, that's, that's how their eyelid skin is. So, this will help them also. So, start on the outside edge because it's much easier to blend out if you suddenly deposit too much when your nose isn't in the way. This eye has been really playing me up the last week or so with hay fever. Really gunky, horrible stuff coming out. So you can see it's already weeped a little bit today and taken some of my eye primer off, but just bear with. If this eye starts to look a little bit raggedy, we'll just ignore that and just concentrate on this eye, this side, okay? Fabulous. Right. I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow. And just really lightly blend this in. Now Glamonatrix is one of the brands that I've wanted to try for quite some time. They're an Australian brand and uh, they're on my list for this year. So this is the first one of this year that I've filming with. There's a couple of companies that I've bought over from last year where I'd bought the palettes but just through pain and one thing and another and the date of them turning up just didn't get around to filming with them so I've got a few of those if you have a look at the um, brands I want to try in 2022 film which hopefully I'm going to remember to put out before this one um, you'll be able to see which brands I'm talking about now I'm, I'm literally putting very very little on the brush itself because I much prefer being able to build the colour up. It's much easier to build the colour up than it is to try and take it back off again if you put too much on. And I must admit I'm really liking how this is building. It's, it lets you start off gently. It doesn't, because when I swatched these I was like, ooh, they've got some pigment. Um, I mean swatches don't really tell you how they're going to perform on your eye, they just they tell you how much pigment you get on a normal single swipe and how the colour will look on your skin, basically. That's the benefit of the swatches. 
because obviously, you know, your skin is probably not going to be the same colour as the models, even if they have done a dark and a light swatch. You can see that's blended out really quite nicely. There's a little bit of sort of clumpage there almost, but <clears throat> I do get dry patches just here and here that can cling to pigment. But I'm going to be going over it with a deeper pigment in a minute anyway, so I'm really not overly worried at this point. Um, if you're wondering how I clean my brushes, I use a clean microfiber cloth and just twirl the brush on it to take off any excess powder. So, I'm just going to repeat the same thing this side. Now the reason that I don't do one eye and then the other eye, the reason I do each colour before moving on to the next colour for both eyes, is because unless you are Jimmy Chuck and make a habit of photoshopping your film and your photos, your eyes are not symmetrical. Few people have symmetrical faces. Those that do are supermodels because their faces are so perfect. Perfect as in perfect symmetry. So there are times when with my fibro and obviously with my allergy, my hay fever, etc. One eyelid can swell more than the other. And this can cause an issue because I often, you'll often see me sit back and just relax my brows and just check that the shapes are the same, which today they are, but there's some days that I do this and one will be higher than the other because of swelling or puffiness or whatever and I'll need to adjust the shape one side so that they look the same and if you've already put all the colours on it's not always that easy to ascertain which colour it is that you need to adjust to get them looking the same just cleaning the excess powder off of this brush. This is a natural hair brush I'm noticing quite a bit of shedding so I'm really glad that I don't use um, colour switches anymore. You do find this with natural hair brushes the first few times you use them until you've sort of washed them about. Usually it takes about three washes for natural hair brushes to stop shedding so don't panic overly if yours are um, shedding somewhat I'm going to go into the green mistletoe I know you wouldn't normally think to put green and orange together but why not is what I say if I don't like it She's makeup, washes off. So, same thing, but this time I'm going to start on my natural crease. And I'm just going to start off just doing a circle right at the edge here because I also want it on the outer third of my mobile lid. And this can sometimes look a little patchy when you first start. If it is going patchy for you and you know adding more pigment isn't sorting the issue out for you and blending more isn't sorting the issue out for you, don't necessarily write the palette off. Try a different brush. Because some formulas, I mean, I usually use synthetic brushes. Just so happens that this one is a natural hair brush, 
but it's the shape that I wanted and I, I haven't managed to find a good synthetic brush this shape for a sensible price because um, I refuse to pay ridiculous prices for brushes So you can see, blending that into the orange. And they're actually blending quite nicely together. I like to flick up at the edge like this. Because if my eyes are too watery to do an eyeliner, by doing this in the angle that you would do an eyeliner, it still gives you that lifted cat eye effect. It's also a good idea if you're just learning to do liner, do this with your um, powder. And then you can just follow the line when you're putting the liner on. And you know you're going to get the line right. And yes, I will be tidying this up. Yeah, I've seen. A lot of people use Glaminatrix and really like the look of their palettes, but this um, Silent Night one really grabbed me. Um, the temptation to play with it prior to filming is has been ridiculous, um, but when I have new palettes, I like to, or well, new palettes to me, because obviously. Some palettes I buy a second hand from Depop. This I got obviously direct from the site. From Glam Nitrix themselves. Um, and they released it at Christmas. Well, December. But whenever I get a palette that's new to me, I like to use it first time on screen because then you're getting my absolute, honest, raw first impressions. Because first impressions for a lot of people will make and break whether they'll use the palette again. Um, a lot of people if they have a bad experience with a palette just won't even try it again. I mean if I have a bad experience I'll try it with different primers, I'll try different brushes, I'll try different techniques. Um, to see if I can get it to work. But I know a lot of people just know it's too much like hard work and they just don't touch it again. So I wanted you to, I like you to see my initial raw reactions to it basically. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't, well, then I hope it's going to be as fabulous as you are, darling. And I hope tomorrow's better. The fabulous as you are is if you're at the start of your day. It's been so long since I've filmed properly that I can't even remember half of the things I say, to be quite frank. I'm just going to get a cotton, well, oblong, not round. And I've got this micellar water in a one of these push top ones. They're great. I just rinse it out and refill it. And what I'm going to do with this. This is how I tidy the edge up. And I have a lot of people say to me, why don't you just use tape? Well, because for tape to adhere strongly enough, 
the powder won't slide under the edge of it. It's going to tug on your skin when you take it off. And that's the whole thing that we're trying to avoid. And I always do my foundation afterwards now anyway, so... I used to do it before. Before I was really into more colourful eye looks. I used to be I used to be the lipstick queen. I had pretty much every single colour of um, Jefferson Starfish. <clears throat> if you know what I mean by that. I had pretty much all of his in every single weird colour under the sun and was known for wearing weird stuff basically. Um, you know, I was the person that go out with blue lipstick, green lipstick, purple lipstick on a Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> right, I'm going to put shimmer on my lid. Now, pressed shimmers you should never ever go into with a wet brush. I'm going to use this one. This is. Oh, it's a Jefferson Starship. There's a surprise. Um, Bold and Morphe Jefferson Starship. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put the pigment on here and I'm going to wet it. Just a cheap setting spray. Um, you can use any liquid to wet the brush after you've applied the pigment. You can use moisturising sprays like MAC or Mario Badescu. Um, you can use priming sprays, setting sprays, finishing sprays. You can even just use clean water from the tap. Um, just whatever you do, please, please, please don't put a wet brush into a pressed pigment because you will end up killing it. Right, I'm going into baubles, which has been calling my name since the palette arrived. This is the Duochrome. Ooh, okay, it's very soft. I'm going to spritz this now. Right, now, the ferrule, this bit, is now wet. So I'm going to tuck it into my knuckles and spin. Because the last thing we want is moisture getting down here, loosening the glue that holds the bristles. Otherwise you're going to end up with a very expensive stick. So, going to starting at the inner corner bring this across now I don't do cut creases in the conventional form where I put you know eye primer or concealer on to whiten out the area because what I want to do I want to see how good the opacity is of the pigment without me needing to do that. I'm just going to dry the brush off and pick a little bit more pigment up for that outer corner. Now in the in the pan it looks blue. While I'm looking at it here it looks blue. But looking down into my mirror, it's goldy, pinky, peachy sort of shade. Which is not always the easiest. I don't know if that's showing or not. I won't know until I start the editing process. If not, I'm just going to look like a silly nodding dog. Now, I was saying to you about this eye. I, I'm drying the brush off by the way, I have to break my own rule with this eye in that I pull the eyelid. Now my, one of my cardinal rules is never never tug on your eyelid because it's basically the thinnest skin on your body and it will stretch and it will you'll end up with deep creasing like I have. Now like I said mine was pulled around when I was five years old. 
so this just goes to show you that even when you're young you cannot get away with it but if like me you do have deep creasing and the issue is if I do it the way I did this side it will just pack the pigment loosely into the creases rather than blending it in and then as it dries it starts falling down into my eye onto my face it just looks awful it hurts so the way that I apply it without causing any additional damage to the lid is I very gently stretch that section out only as far as it takes to flatten the lid I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll and I'm applying the pigment making sure it's properly blended and then gently letting go not just letting it ping back and then I shall finish the rest of the lid off the same way and you can see how much more this lid moves let's try it off again pick up a bit more pigment yeah you can see just how much more flexibility there is in this particular lid to the other. Right. Oh. Gosh, I'm in a lot of pain today. Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you just now. I'm going to shoot off screen and apply some foundation and base products and stuff. Uh, and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. So, I've got a little while now before I can chat to you again. But for you, my pickles, it's going to be absolutely instant right after this wibbly wobbly bit right see you right now hey I am back okay um, the brows I used my usual pink honey this is the uh, honey glue in strawberry sherbet and you can see how much I've used it I have got a backup, don't panic. Um, and I basically, I use a spoolie to brush them up and then brush them up and smooth them across into the shape that I want and then use a fine brush to use whichever powder I want from the uh, palette I'm using to colour the brows in. The reason that I do it like this is because the pink honey sort of soap brow basically is slightly tacky I don't mean tacky as in you have your legs and your boobs out I mean sticky tacky and by putting a coloured powder on it or any powder on it you set the brow into place by virtue of it being a little bit sticky grabs the powder as well so it holds the powder on for you as you can see I decided to go for the dark blue and I'm now going to use the red on this elf smudge brush called stocking the blue by the way was sleigh because I'm determined to use all four of the uh, matte powders. I'm just going to smudge this very gently along the lower lash line and then turning it ever so slightly to an angle just to soften that out a bit. Be careful putting red and pink under your eye because it can make you look a bit ill. 
but I figured seeing as how one of my eyes is a little bit red anyway, this might help disguise it and make it look like I meant it to look like that. Power of makeup, people. Power of makeup. It's just an illusion. Ba 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 ba. Illusion. I'm having a moment to myself. Right, I'm going to fairy lights in the palette. I'm just going to run that along under the tail edge of my brow. Because along with her boobs and other sticky outfits, apparently our brows slide down our face a bit as we get older as well. So by putting either, a, I mean I, I like to use a shimmery powder but you can just use um, a powder the same colour as your skin but a couple of shades lighter just to give it a bit of lift um, and by doing that it creates, anything light comes forward so it makes it look as if your brows are higher, just gives you that illuminated youthful look. And I am just going to check I haven't got any eye boogers before I start this. No, for once I'm alright. And I'm going to pop some of this on the inner corner. Because we all have this dimple here. It's part of your skull. You cannot change it. So that just helps add a bit of brightness. Gives you a more awake look. I like to bring mine along and just blend it in to the colour that I've run under my eyes. I just think it, for my eye shape anyway, it just finishes the look off nicely. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. This is usually the point that this eye will now start to water and completely ruin the lovely eye look that I've done. How pretty is that? Right, my lovely ones, I am going to pause you for one last time. I am going to pop some highlight on my cheeks, do some mascara, do some lippy, and I'll be back with my finished look. So, please don't go anywhere. Because, well, for you it's instant again. So, here's the wibbly bit. There we go, finished look. Hair's doing whatever the hell it wants. I was going to stick a wig on, but it's just too damn hot in my kitchen. In fact, I might even need. My tribute to Peter Mon. You know, it was his encouragement that got me to start the channel in the first place. He was like, if you feel like starting a channel, just do it. Don't think about it, just do it. Boost! Right, okay, so what do I think of the Glaminatrix palette? Blues and greens are very difficult colours to create, but these blended out perfectly. The duochrome is a little crumbly, you need to be very very careful, very gentle with that. So I'm amazed it didn't actually break in transit coming all the way from Australia, um, which shows how well they pack their things. I am genuinely extremely happy with the look this has created and I can't wait to play with it some more and try the other two shimmers that are in there because it's the only things I've not used. Right, what else do I have on my face because I'm always asked this and I always forget to tell you. So, today the primer is the Illamasqua Hydra Veil. Foundation is the Urban Decay Hydra Maniac in 20 Fair. Wondering what shade I am. 
The concealer today I used the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Satin Finish in shade Fair Beige. As always, my Cotier Spun Translucent Extra Coverage Powder. Today, for a bronzer, instead of using my butter bronzer, I use my Too Faced Sweetie Pie. Blush is one of the Hello Kitty ones from Colourpop, bundled up. This is an absolute dupe for um, Orgasm by Nars, if you're wondering. The Kaleidos Prophecy highlighter is the one currently gracing my face and dazzling to the gods and blinding them so they can't see what I'm up to. Uh, lipstick, I am <laughs> relieving my youth in more ways than one. Rimmel, you ready for this girls? How many of us have worn this? I say girls because in the 80s when I was wearing this, the boys that were wearing makeup tended to go for black lipstick rather than this particular colour. 066, Heather Shimmer. I never wore bronze shimmer, I was always Heather Shimmer. Um, so I'm extremely excited that uh, that is uh, a colour they have brought back because I, I couldn't find it for years and then all of a sudden it's like <gasps> Heather Shimmer, I'm very excited indeed. Mascara, I'm trying out one of the ones that I got in one of my rocker boxes. Sport FX, Sport Stamina Waterproof Long Lasting Mascara. So let's see how that goes because watery eyes, waterproof mascara, bit of a necessity. Setting spray today is my Gerard Slay All Day as ever code in the description box tells you whether I earn from any of them. Uh, this is the rose scent which they did in collaboration with Nikia Joy. If you're wondering, no it doesn't smell like old lady rose, it actually smells like really freshly cut roses. Beautiful scent, one of my favourites. So, do I like the palette? Yes. Am I going to buy another palette from them? Yes. Uh, quite simply, I'm going to do the pre-order that they are currently have on for one of their other palettes before it sells out because the pre-order went live about an hour ago. So I should be doing that the minute I finish filming this. Right, so that is it my darlings. I really hope you have enjoyed this. Let me know if you prefer this style where I talk about the palette when I've got the makeup on and then go into straight into applying it or do you prefer seeing me without any makeup on talking about the palette so you can truly see the complete transformation all the way through um, I've got to be honest I did it this way today because the spots on my chin were looking like Belisha beacons thank you so much for covering it up Urban Decay and Elf um, if you're wondering my choice of application method for that particular foundation is uh, Royal and Lanical Stippler Dual Fibre, Duo Fibre. Um, I just find it gives a really light finish but you can still work it into your face, it doesn't look like it's sitting on top but doesn't apply it too heavily, doesn't streak, fantastic and obviously better coverage than you get with a brush, uh, with a sponge rather. Um, I need to wiggle, I'm going to cut this bit out, give me a second. Oh folks, pain is, pain is, pain is pain today. Right, uh, if you're one of my regular viewers, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing you and obviously where I've not been uploading very much recently, you're probably not noticing that you're not seeing my films because I haven't been uploading many anyway. Um, while you're checking your subscription status, it's also worth checking your notification status, not just for me but for all channels because all of us are finding that your notifications are getting knocked from all back to personalised, which basically means you don't get any at all. Uh, once you've done that, let me know in the comments, have you tried Glaminatrix? Do you like them? Do you have this palette? Have you tried this palette? Um, 
if you have and you've got an Instagram or a Twitter and you want to drop me a link so I can have a look at different looks that you've done I would really love that I'd love to see what other people have been inspired to do with the palette um, and if I recreate any of your looks I will of course tag you in subsequent films um, yeah if you're new here however hi hello welcome I hope you enjoyed it uh, this is pretty much an indication of the madcap nonsense you get from my channel, really. Um, just craziness and occasionally my brain wanders off without me. Sometimes it comes back before the end of the film, but not always. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, it'd be awesome if you'd like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on the internet. Super easy to do. Yeah, hit that red subscribe button down there and you turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications in the hope the gremlins at YouTube pull their finger out and actually send you some. In the meantime, as well as the rather ample bag side upon which I am perched, I have an ample back catalogue of films that you can be indulging in. They're from the previous. Four years of my channel, three years of my channel. I started in 2018, so yeah, this is the fourth year of my channel. Wow. Okay. Basically, if you need a bit of me time, grab a drink. Not sponsored, but these are lush. Oh my gosh. Um, grab a snack. Pick a playlist, put your feet up and get comfy, basically. We love me a nice bit of iced coffee. Right. I think that's probably quite enough for me for one day. So all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.